Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for watching and all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. And in this video, I'm going to talk about um, how I edit a waterfall photo. Now, a couple of weeks ago or so, I did a vlog uh, where I was out in a local park and I uh, took a bunch of photos of waterfalls, and that was like a behind the scenes kind of vlog. Uh, and then I think a couple of days after that, I actually posted a photo, uh, not a photo, a video uh, about how I create kind of a mystical, kind of like fairy tale looking kind of waterfall look. And so, I'll put those links in the appropriate corners, uh, corner, I guess. Uh, but I got one more waterfall photo from that day, and I'm doing it a little bit differently. Um, it's um, this video is really less about you know here's exactly what I did and how you get to you know from point A to point B, and it's a little bit more about the fact that I don't always know how I'm getting from point A to point B, and sometimes I don't even know what point B is. I just kind of start experimenting and playing around until I get to a place where I say. Yeah, I think that's it, and then I'm kind of done. So, to be clear, it's kind of about artistic edits and that my path is not a linear one. I think people get the impression that I say, okay, okay here's my photo, and I want to get to that, and here's the three things you do, or the five filters, or here's how you do things on multiple layer or whatever, and um, it looks like that because I record videos and talk about this stuff, but there are many times that my path, as I said, is it's not linear at all. It's very much a meandering path. And today's photo is an example of that. So I just kind of wanted to walk through that workflow. So here's the photo that I took. Now this is, um, I don't remember how long it was. I had a 10 stop filter and I was shooting this, I think with my wide angle, but um, basically I think it was about 90 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, but the sky's a little bit blown out. Uh, the water's a little too bright in some spots and you can't, you can see the rocks in some areas under the water, but it's not really, uh, crisp and clear and I turned it into that now um, that's very different it's obviously a bit on the dramatic side but I thought I'd walk through the workflow and show you how I did it so let's jump into that okay so here we go this is the base layer with the raw develop filter so you can see that there's the before and there's the after and, and one of the most uh, or I guess the easiest or, or whatever one of the biggest things you'll notice is the sky right so if you look at that kind of blown out, um, but it is a raw file. I was able to recover this guy, which is one of the reasons I shoot raw and, and highly recommend it. Now, there's some spots in this guy, which obviously I needed to clean my lens, but uh, I'll take care of those in the next step. Um, in the uh, raw develop filter, I just did a little bit of a temperature and tint adjustment, added some contrast, took down the highlights significantly. I'm negative 98, so I basically took the highway highlights almost all the way down, uh, and then brought up the shadows a little bit. So again, I kind of went from a a little bit too bright of an image to one that's much more balanced and you know you can tell uh, that it's a big difference and personally I could look at it now and say okay now that I know I've got the sky under control everything else is gonna work out just fine that's kinda how it, how it goes for me um, next I added the tone filter this was just a little bit of contrast and a little bit more highlight and shadow work so let me show you again there's before and after just darken the photo a little bit because I took down some of those brighter spots um, next, I used Accent AI, and that was just a global adjustment, just to kind of go back, uh, almost opposite of what I did in the first two filters, which was tone and develop, managing the highlights and, and the bright parts of it. Um, I just added Accent AI because, let me show you again, there's before in the after. If you look over here like these rocks on this left-hand side, it really brings them back, uh, back to life, right? A little too dark there, and looking a much, uh, much better now. So. Um, and then, then it was just denoise, right? I just added a layer, uh, not a layer, a filter for denoise in the sky and just smoothed it out a little bit. And then, you know, honestly, if you look at this starting photo, you know, so I started there, and then if you can compare it to that, right, before and after, for this layer, uh, I think I've come a long way, and many times I might would stop there. The water's a little bit too blue, uh, but you can fix that easy. But I might would normally stop there if I was just trying to do a, kind of a traditional edit, a non-artistic edit, I guess, but um, I wasn't, and I was going for a little bit more artistic and dramatic, so I kept going. Um, next, I added an erased image layer, and basically I took the spots out of the sky, there were spots in the water, and there was a, um, a spot over here, yeah, right there, where the sun just, you know, it caught right there, and it was just boom, it was just way too much. So um, I went in and just erased all that stuff, quick and easy, right? Um, and then I was like, okay, so what else can I do? This is where I generally just add a new layer uh, because I like the stuff I've previously done, so I don't wanna continue to pile filters on the layer that I'm on. 
um, because I'm happy with the look, right? Like that, that's a nice looking photo, I think, generally speaking. Um, it's not amazing, it's, it's okay, but you know, it's nice. It looks colorful and the light and all that. Just, it's kind of not, it's nice. I don't know what to say besides nice. It's not great, it's not awesome, but it's not junk. Um, it's nice. So anyway, but I wanted to do something a little bit more dramatic and interesting. So I had a new layer and this is where I just start experimenting with filters and I think, well, what else can I do? So I had the tone filter, right? And so here, more contrast, a little bit of smart tone, took down the highlights again. Um, then I went and got the matte look filter and that's not one I would traditionally think of using, especially on landscapes. Now, I'd use it on cityscapes to get a little bit of a vintage or faded look, but I used it here and I kind of liked what it did. It, 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 you know, it does kind of fade it out, right? The amount, I'm at 64 and I'm at 16 on fade. So not a real heavy handed fade, but a little bit. And so again, this is just me experimenting with filters and kind of bouncing around, um, you know, I don't want to say aimlessly, um, but it's a little bit aimlessly because I'm trying to find something I like and a look that I like, and I'm not sure what I want to do. So this is really the meandering path of not really sure where I'm going and therefore not sure the quickest way to get there. So I just jack around with stuff. Um, color balance, and so I add that, and as you can see, it gives a little bit more warmth to the photo. Um, I took the shadows, made them a little bit warmer, and same with the midtones, and uh, that's it really. So not a lot, a pretty subtle uh, change. And then I came in, came in with adjustable gradient, and that was mostly, I think, just lightening the bottom. Yeah, I increased contrast and exposure in the bottom. And that's really because I felt like, if, let me turn that off again. Um, it's not a significant change, but in some ways I'm losing those rocks. There's uh, With the heavy contrast I've used on a couple of different layers and filters, I think I'm losing a little bit of the rocks in the foreground. And so adjustable gradient was really just lightening that a little bit. And also, let me turn it off again, tiny bit of difference in the rocks, especially on that left-hand side. It's one of the things about um, shooting in a, a long exposure on water, if it's really shallow like that, not only is the water really smooth, but you have the ability to view into the water or see into it much better than you would otherwise. And so another reason I like long exposures. Um, so again, you know, here I am and I've got all these filters and several layers and I've got a photo that, you know, looks pretty normal uh, and it's pretty nice, right? There's the base raw file and there it is now. So I'm looking at it and thinking, well, okay, I kind of like it. And so again, this is kind of what I do. I say, well, I'm gonna add another layer and I don't recall specifically, but often what I'll do is I'll save it as a Luminar file and then come back to it and add a new layer. That way I get away from the photo and you know what my mindset might be or maybe I have a creative block or maybe I just, you know, I'm not feeling inspired and I'm thinking, well, I kind of like it, but I, I want to do something better or different or whatever, you know, maybe more interesting. So I'll set it aside, save it as a Luminar file and come back then add a new layer, right? And so on this last layer, I went back in and I just started jacking with more filters, right? So added a little saturation and vibrance. Uh, actually, I took the saturation down. I added some vibrance. Uh, brilliance and warmth, a bunch, uh, um, I uh, moved both of those up or increased them. And as you can see, it really adds a bit of golden pop to the photo. Now, I kind of like that in the foreground with the rocks, especially the ones in that shallow water. I'm not really as much a fan of it on the trees. So I come over here to this filter and at HSL, and as you can see, I take down some of the things that I just added in brilliance and warmth, especially in the greens and the yellows are really prominent in those trees. So it a little bit undoes what I did with brilliance and warmth. I don't think I did any hue or yeah, luminance on the green. I took that down as well. And so that impacts how bright those trees are. So if you look at that before and after I took down the saturation and luminance, um, also brought down the saturation of the blue. As I said a couple minutes ago, the water is just getting too blue for me. So there it was, right? It's a fun, colorful, it looks like an HDR. It looks like an early HDR of mine where I pretty much just always took the saturation slider to the right and just said, go, you know, jack it up, make it colorful. Um, and I wasn't trying to do that kind of look. So took it back down here. Uh, next up was tone. And this is again, just experimenting with the light. Um, and in this case, you know, I think I, I added more contrast and took down the highlights. So again, bouncing around a little bit seems kind of aimless, doesn't That's what I mean. It's like, you know, I'm, I, I think I've used tone filter now on three different layers. I just, I'm jacking around until I find something I like. Um, then I added a vignette and, and I thought, all right, I'm done because the vignette for me is pretty much the last filter I use. Um, I do all my editing. I usually, I didn't on this photo, but I usually do denoise 
at the very end, and then if I'm adding a vignette, that's the last thing. So I added a vignette and thought, all right, I'm done. There's a vignette. I'm good. Um, and so I sat down and looked at it, and I was like, well, maybe I'm not good. Maybe I got a little bit more to do. So I got two more filters. I went and got adjustable gradient, and for me, this was the bottom, and I took down the exposure, and if you look at the water in front of those rocks, so kind of like the middle of the photo, it's fairly bright, um, and to me, it's too bright. Um, I wanted to get a little bit darker look to that, so I pulled that down a bit. Um, I left the orientation, I think, right in the middle. Let me see, yeah, right in the middle. So um, I'm just trying to drop that exposure in the water. And of course, when you do that, it drops the exposure and everything below the line. And so I went into dodge and burn, and I just um, basically dodged some here on the rocks. And so if you look at it, I just brightened up the rocks a little bit. So there's before, if you look at the backs of those rocks, a little bit darker, and after, I just added a little bit more light. And that was how I got to my final version. So once again, I started with that, right? Long exposure, F22. Um, you know, I like the photo, really. I think it's, it's shot pretty decently. Um, and then I went for a bit of a dramatic edit, and, and here you go, right? So if you look at the before and after, I reclaim the sky, which I like. Um, I like what I did with the water and the rocks and stuff. I just think it, it's more interesting and different. Um, and I was going for dramatic, right? So uh, that's really it. Um, you know, more than anything, it's not so much that I wanted to show you another waterfall photo, um, although I got a lot of them. <laughs> um, and you know what? Maybe I'll do one on some of the black and whites because I did, in that video, I did some monochromes and uh, I think they came out pretty well. So maybe I'll do that. But anyway, um, if you'd like to see that, let me know. Uh, but basically what I... Um, I liked the long exposure. I liked a lot of the colors and stuff that I could pull out of the scene. But mostly I wanted to go kind of dramatic and moody without doing the fairy tale kind of look like I did in that other video. And um, the bigger point of the video was me bouncing around. And so, um, you know, I, I learned Luminar by playing with all the filters and presets and just messing around a whole lot. And so generally, if I know what I want to do, I know how to get there fairly quickly. Not always, but usually. But in this case, I didn't really know where I wanted to go. And so you never know how to get there if you don't know where you're going, right? It's like driving down the road. You could just go in the wrong direction for a long time. And that's a little bit of what my editing was in this photo. I'd bounce around, I would do things, and then I'd add another filter which kind of undid some of those things I'd previously done. So I guess the point is, like um, as you're learning Luminar and working through things and getting better at, at your craft, you know, don't feel like you're, it's a setback if you don't know exactly what you want to do or how to get there. And don't feel like, you know, you're, you're less than if um, for some reason you kind of meander in terms of your editing. Everybody does it. I mean, arguably, I know a, a pretty good amount about Luminar. And I wandered all over the place in this photo because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. And therefore, I don't know how to get there. So for me, the fun thing is you just keep going in and you take a photo like that and you turn it into something that's different or interesting or the alike or maybe all the above and um, you just have fun doing it. And so to me, that's the point of things. And so I just wanted to show you a meandering path as opposed to here's the three things you do to get X, Y, or Z. I just wanted to show you something a little different. So I hope it helps. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and all that stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, friends. Have a great one. Take care. Adios.